Welcome back everyone, Jake here. Currently, we're on day 45 of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and Russia officially has lost this war. However, it's going to be a couple more weeks or a couple more months before they finally admit it. And here is a map of how the war is going, put out by the BBC, and the date of this map is March 29th. So you can see all of the Russian advances from the north, from the east, from the south, and this is what the map looks like as of April 7th. So about a week ago, Russia announced that they were pivoting their war strategy, and they've completely given up and pulled out of the north. So they controlled the Chernobyl exclusion zone here in the northwest of Kyiv. They controlled this territory along the border near Cherniv, and they controlled or were advancing from uh, this corner up here. However, Russia has now officially limited their scope for this war. They're no longer trying to conquer or control the capital city of Kyiv. They've probably given up on Odessa and taking Moldova. They're still going to bomb these cities. They're still going to kill a lot of people. But thankfully, as far as ground forces go, I think their main objective now is just to control the land bridge along the coast of the Sea of Azov. They just want to have a land bridge to Crimea, control the water coming from the, Dne uh, the, ne the Dnieper River through this canal system, and they want to control the Dunsk and Luhansk uh, uh, oblasts. So Russia is limiting their scope, limiting their scale, and they had to because their military was going to collapse from all the casualties they were taking. Here's the daily tracker of how many Russian soldiers killed put out by Ukraine's defense ministry. And this is as of April 8th. This is 19,000 dead guys. This doesn't count POWs, doesn't count wounded, doesn't count desertions. And people keep arguing with me in the comments that this is not 19,000 dead. But I assure you, it is. Russia's war dead belay its slogan that no one is left behind. As Russian mothers and widows grieve, countless bodies are left unclaimed in Ukraine. This information is put out by Ukraine's defense ministry, but there's no reason to lie when Russia already looks so terrible so far in this war. But they're saying that they're respectfully trying to return the bodies of dead Russian soldiers to the Russian military or Russian government, and Russia doesn't want them. Russia's not even trying to reclaim their war dead. Ukraine has about 7,000 unclaimed Russian corpses in morgues and refrigerated rail cars. So if the Ukrainians have 7,000 bodies, how many do the Russians have? And they're just lying to their own people. I think the official number given several weeks ago is one or two thousand Russian soldiers have been killed, and no Ukrainian civilians have been killed. And if you want to know, is Russia lying today? Here is a handy-dandy flowchart to determine that, yes, Russia is lying. And as Russia pulls back from the north, we're getting a more detailed picture exactly how bad the destruction and devastation is. We've made it to the town of Borodyanka, which is northwest of Bucha, and somehow, I didn't, didn't know it was possible, but the devastation is even worse. I mean, look at that, that's an apartment building, uh, just sort of chopped in half. The mayor says when this invasion began, Russia actually sent its jets over this town, that they bombed it from the sky, knowing full well that there were civilians here. And the great fear is that as Ukraine retakes more and more land on the way up towards the Russian border, that they'll discover more atrocities, possibly even worse than the ones we've already seen, because Russians were here for that much longer. The other thing about this town is that all you really hear is the sound of crows. There are very few people, because there's nothing for them to come back to. So this is a town north of Kyiv, and the Russian military immediately bombed it before they took it. Makes no sense. Why would you destroy civilian targets uh, in a town that you were planning on occupying and using? And I didn't make a video last week about the atrocities in Bucha, guys. These are clearly war crimes as evidence mounts of Russian soldiers 
executing uh, captives, executing unarmed civilians, raping women, murdering them, and then trying to burn the bodies to destroy the evidence. They're looting these towns, senseless destruction. At this point, the Russian military is just a band of marauders, and they're committing war crimes. And I couldn't make a video about the, the war crimes in Bucha, guys, because if I show... If I show atrocities, if I show the images, the pictures, and the videos, then YouTube is just going to demonetize my video and age restrict it. I showed uh, a clip, a video, a picture in this video, and sure enough, it got demonetized and age restricted. You have to be logged in and above 18 in order to watch the video. And before we go on, I just want to state that the public perception of Russia is devastating, and you can tell just from my analytics on my video. Yes, the people inside Russia are brainwashed, basically because Russia controls all state media. But what is the global perception? What do people around the world think of this conflict? And this video got 381,000 views, and it got a, a thumbs-up ratio of 17,730 to 376. The people leaving comments, the people thumbsing down videos that uh, are, they're doing it basically in support of Russia, they're idiots. For whatever reason, they choose to believe the Russian propaganda and the Russian narrative that somehow the Ukrainian government is full of Nazis and they have to kill all of these people to cleanse or denazify the Ukrainian government. But these corpses of civilians were left in the streets for weeks. Russia occupied this town for almost a month, and these bodies can be seen from satellite images. Any government in the, in the world, any corporation with satellite images can confirm that the Russian soldiers that occupied this town they killed all these people, there are mass graves being discovered, and they just let the bodies uh, of the civilians they killed rot in the street for weeks. So the war crimes that they're committing, the atrocities that they're committing, here's another one, a missile strike at a crowded Ukrainian train station leaves 52 dead. And this article from The Atlantic, the Russian military has descended into inhumanity. They have absolutely zero compassion for uh, women and children, for the elderly, for any civilians at all. And there's only two reasons why you would do this. Indiscriminate torturing and murdering of civilians. And one is to demoralize them to the point that their government surrenders. And I think in the beginning you could make that argument that, uh, you know, Vladimir Putin was indiscriminately bombing civilians in order to get Zelensky and the Ukrainian government to just lay down their arms, to just surrender to Russia to save their people. And this only works if the people are completely demoralized. But when Ukrainian civilians, when the Ukrainian public is polled, 93% of them believe that Russia will be defeated in this war. 93% of Ukrainians believe they're going to defeat Russia, push them back from their borders, and win this war. And Russia has to realize this, that continuing to bomb and continuing to kill civilians isn't going to get Zelensky to surrender. The Ukrainian government, the Ukrainian military, isn't going to surrender or lay down arms when 93% of them think they're winning this war. So the only other explanation for the Russian military to continue killing civilians indiscriminately like this is they're just committing genocide. They just hate the Ukrainian people and they want to kill as many as they can, destroy as many homes, destroy as many businesses as they can before they inevitably pull out and give up on this war. Thankfully, there are happy moments of reunification such as this video of a Ukrainian soldier liberating his hometown and being able to reunite and see his parents once again.
Где ты делаешь так же? А все хорошо. There are lots of harrowing stories, encouraging stories such as this one. One I want to share with you guys is of two Russian soldiers in 28 that were hospitalized after being fed poisonous pies by civilians living under Russian occupation. So thankfully, the uh, civilian population is standing with the Ukrainian forces, helping contribute to the war effort in any way, acts of civil disobedience and acts of resistance, feeding them poisonous pies, this one I enjoy. Let's now pivot this video to focusing and talking about how dumb the Russian military is, and I still cannot get over the fact that they dug trenches in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. We now have the satellite images and people, Chernobyl's been retaken, but they've now visited the trenches that Russian forces were living in for weeks. Here's a, a drone video zooming in on the trenches that the Russian soldiers dug. It then pans up and pans over and it shows you that's the Chernobyl plant. They dug these tre trenches not even three or four miles away. News reporters have gone to the trenches where the Russian soldiers were living and they've got a Geiger counter to measure the amount of radiation. <laughs> So if you're just in the area walking through for a couple minutes, you're fine. But if you're sleeping eight or nine hours a night in one of these trenches, all of this soil has been, you know, irradiated. It's going to be toxic for tens of thousands of years. So the fact that the Russian military sent their troops in and then told them to put up camp here without giving them any kind of protective gear or warning, it just shows you how dumb the Russian military really is. This is not a professional fighting force. They're poorly equipped, poorly trained, and now morale is at an all-time low. And they're just given the most bizarre equipments. Look at this bizarre truck that these Russian soldiers are driving with the mismatched tires. Here's an article I want to share with you guys about Russia's increasingly bizarre artisanal armor. Makes it look like their military is from a Mad Max movie as opposed to a major superpower. So I'll link this article down below if you want to zoom in on these goofy pictures of Russian forces desperate to add more armor and protection to their vehicles as they were constantly being ambushed by Ukrainian forces. So it's basically whatever they can glue on or str strap on or chain on to their trucks they were doing to just give them that more that much more level of additional protection. This 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 fuel truck had uh, trees that were chopped down strapped to it. It's just unbelievable. Let me show you this uh, one picture. This probably was a destroyed APC carrier, and they chose to just cannibalize parts of it to put it on their the front of their truck to once again just give them uh, any level of additional protection from Ukrainian forces. And the pictures and videos, guys, let me just show you uh, this am ambushed Russian convoy. How does how does this even happen? Like what 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 kind of fighting took place here? Absolutely devastating. In the Urban Dictionary, there's now a new verb. It's called Ukraine. Verb to be Ukraine when you are Russia and you inv invade a country. And the response is humiliation on a global forum. The technical term Russia has been Ukraine. Here's a meme I want to share with you guys that I really enjoyed. This is of a destroyed uh, Ukrainian apartment building. 
be strong like this kitchen cabinets. And when you zoom in, all the dishes are still on the drying rack, the teapots are still on the shelf, this building was completely destroyed, and this uh, cabinet, cabinet survived. All right, let's now get to one of the primary reasons that I think that Russia has lost this war and they're in serious trouble. And the reason why is because all of their ground forces and wounded that they're pulling out of Ukraine back into Russia, these are all eyewitnesses to war crimes and atrocities. They saw firsthand that the Ukrainian people don't want them there. Uh, they're not welcome. They're, they're fighting people who are just defending their homes. Here is a intercepted conversation between a Russian soldier and his girlfriend. And there are thousands of these conversations on unsecure channels that are being, you know, just Russian soldiers trying to call their wives, girlfriends, mothers, whoever. And Western intelligence and Ukraine is picking up all of these conversations. I want to share this one with you guys. We have casualties and lots of wounded. We are under threat every single second that we are on Ukrainian soil. So this is why these Russian soldiers are digging these trenches. They want a place to safely sleep at night because they don't feel safe in their vehicles with these uh, javelin missiles and RPGs and these Turkish drones, all of these uh, vehicles are, are just vulnerable targets. And for over a month now, all of these Russian soldiers have been living in fear. Here's another video I want to share with you of a Russian POW or a Russian contractor that decided to surrender himself and he's calling home to his mother. Мам, все, все нормально. Я в Украине, я сдал оружие, сдался в плен сам. Все хорошо, меня тут кормят, меня этот, обувают, одевают. Все в порядке, да не переживай там. Сейчас нас посадят в СИЗО, ждать пока будет обмен пленными. Мам, успокойся, успокойся, там кормят три раза в день, поят. Все в порядке, ты не переживай. Я сам, моя инициатива сдаться, чтобы свои не убили, мам. Ты знаешь, что тут происходит вообще? Ты знаешь, что происходит здесь? Мам, тут наши, наши же, которые мы нашими русскими называем, воюя с Украиной, убивают людей, мир. Ты понимаешь это? Что нам делать? Мам, все через воинскую часть делается. Они все. нам мозги покоряют. Потому что там командира полка нету, мам. Через флот, значит, через корпус, 11-й армейский корпус. There are thousands and thousands of conversations just like this one that have been recorded by Western intelligence and Ukrainian forces conversations uh, getting back home to the people of Russia. And what I think is going to happen here is Russia just swallowed a poison pill. Up until this point, these soldiers inside the country, their communication was being deliberately restricted. They had their cell phones taken away. They weren't allowed to call home and explain to their family and friends what was going on. But with Russia pulling tens of thousands of soldiers out of the north, back into Belarus and back into Russia, these are all first-hand eyewitnesses to war crimes, to atrocities. They're going to go back to Russia and finally be able to 
tell their family and friends what they were told to do, what they were forced to do, what they saw, what is actually going on inside the country that is clearly contradicting the propaganda uh, narrative put out by the Kremlin. Obviously, I think the intention of the Russian forces is to swing all of these troops around to focus just on the Donbass region and holding this land bridge to Crimea. But these are all soldiers now suffering from basically PTSD. They just got out of the active war zone, and Russia is now going to tell them they have to swing around and basically go back in. And potentially the fighting in the south near Crimea and Kurzon wasn't so bad, but do you really want to take all of these eyewitnesses to the the slaughtering and the ass-kicking they got by the Ukrainians in the north? So I think this is going to continue a couple more weeks, a couple more months, but I don't, I don't see Russia making any tangible advances on the ground when their ground forces perform so terribly. What clearly is uh, Russia is attempting to do here is a pincer movement because there are about 10 or 20,000 Ukrainian forces uh, holding the line here, and Russia is trying to encircle them from the south, encircle them from the north, cut them off, and completely annihilate them. But, you know, this, this war is two-sided in that if Russia wants to give up on the north to focus on the south, the Ukrainians also can, uh, once again, make their fortifications, but now focus on getting all supplies they're getting from the west down to their uh, military and fighting forces in the south. Okay, everyone, that's all for this update video. If you found it informative, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. I greatly appreciate it. Until the next video, take care, be safe.